Hello and welcome to my health channel. Today I'm going to talk about the current flood in the southeast of Nigeria this October 2022. Also, I'm going to talk about the waterborne diseases when there is a flood disaster. As you can see from all the photos and videos, flood is an overflow of water onto land that is normally dry. There are many reasons flood can happen. This very flood disaster was simply caused by the release of excess water from a dam in a neighboring country, Cameroon. Basically, the Lagdo Dam in the Republic of Cameroon released excess water from their reservoir. Nigerian government was very much aware that any release of water from the dam would cascade down to Nigeria through the river Benue and East tributaries and impact heavily in the communities and cause excessive damage. Nigerians' inland reservoirs are expected to overflow up and until the end of this month. Nigerian government was aware of the, of the consequences on the front line states and that the communities along the river Benue and Niger will suffer the consequences. However, nothing was done to prevent this from happening. Okay, it's been an accident waiting to happen. Okay, it wasn't a natural disaster, but a man-made one, which makes it so sad. Kogi and Anambra State predicted this overrun by combined waters and they emptied into their regions. This disaster could have been prevented. Okay, we can see um, people have resorted to use of canoes to commute. Flood water have submerged the roads. Um, livelihood lost. Thousands of travelers have been stranded in Kogi State and in Anambra State. Um, Obaro and the neighboring towns as well as Anam. We have seen residential homes and businesses covered in these states. We can also see children and adults trying to get to places on their own. This is very sad. Um, the areas in this picture and videos covers, like I said, Lokoja, um, Obaro and Anam. We can all see the devastation this carelessness has costed our people. As a healthcare professional, my concern with this flood is the waterborne diseases that comes with flood. We have already heard that people have drowned from this accident. Water levels rose and caught people off guard. When water is deep, people would find it hard to see obstruction in the way and may fall or trip. I'm very concerned about the power lines, which may still be live. People don't think about this when such things happen. I'm so concerned considering the kind of power lines in Nigeria that we all know about. Water levels and the rate of water is flowing can quickly change. It becomes more difficult to know what is happening because there may be no access to local radio or TV. People have to be told to move and or evacuate when the flood rises. Even seven inches of water moving water can knock someone down people have to be careful because they could be walking through deep waters flood water is dirty it's contaminated because they carry sewage and other pollutants contaminated water when you see it is brown or black water we know that floor um, floor water flows into structures and carries disease causing organisms. It is not advisable to swim in flood waters because the currents, which remain unpredictable, can carry hazards with them. Imagine swimming in water that contains sewage and chemicals. This um, an immediate impact may include drowning, injuries, hypothermia. This flood has indeed affected the vulnerable rural areas who, as we all know, are heavily reliant on agriculture. There will be huge destruction of crops, loss of livestock. Water and sanitation will be severely impacted. Food will definitely cause overflow of um, sanitation 
all. Um, the flood will definitely cause the overflow of sanitation facilities and increase the contamination risk. There will be loss of life, human casualties. People have been isolated due to flood waters. There will be damage to properties. There will be strain on health services. There will be mental health problems such as anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. There will be undernutrition and malnutrition. People affected will eat less during this time. They will lose access to regular food supplies. Agriculture can be significantly disrupted. Quantity and quality of food available may lead to food insecurity and undernutrition. People will lose their homes. The exposure to this flood will increase risk of pneumonia, especially in children under the age of five. When flood is over, more health issues will arise. This is when public health should be involved to do a risk assessment and provide interventions. From the health point of view, mosquito breeding will increase. It becomes a breeding site for mosquitoes. Malaria is going to be on the rise. But malaria and dengue fever are vector-borne diseases. In case you need to recap on what dengue is, it is a viral infection. The mosquitoes that gives dengue or causes dengue bites during the day and at dusk or before dusk. These mosquitoes are found near still waters. Both dengue and malaria are spread by mosquitoes. I have a video on dengue fever in case you want to know more about it. It's important to also note that stagnant waters in gardens, gutters on the streets, okay, um, parts of home or farmland can um, can become bre breeding grounds for mosquitoes um, that cause um, malaria and dengue fever. Then you have what they call the leptospirosis, which people can get through drinking contaminated water, such as flood waters. It's a bacterial disease. If contaminated water gets into the eyes, nose, mouth, broken skin can lead to infection. One can also get it from contaminated um, food. Okay, then you have the hepatitis A, which you can get through contaminated food and water. Then you have um, the diarrhea. Um, flood water may contain sewage so that eating and drinking anything contaminated by these waters can cause diarrheal disease such as E. coli or salmonella infection. Then, then you have people can get cholera, people can get typhoid, okay, people can get what they call schistosomiasis, um, people can get skin rash, and people can get wound infection. Okay, um, I'm actually hoping that the government will speedily intervene to help the vulnerable people who are affected by this man-made flood that could have been prevented. Okay, I'm, I'm also hoping that the public health in Nigeria will do a risk assessment and provide interventions to save lives. Okay, I'm very concerned about the waterborne diseases. Okay, and um, hepatitis A, malaria, skin rashes, typhoid, schistosomiasis, and many others. Okay, um, this is what you get when you get flood. Okay, I'm just think, I'm just worried about the long term effects of flood. You know, I'm hoping that public health implementation implementations of drinking water and sewage should be high in the agenda. Okay, thank you for watching. Share this video to your friends and family. Help the vulnerable where you can. Donate, donate, send money, help any of them, any of the victims if you can. It's very important. Okay, please, please, please subscribe, like, and comment. Okay, I hope you have learned something from my video. I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much and have a good day.